Hi, welcome to episode 20 of A Lovely Yarn Podcast. This is a podcast about fiber things, um, mostly knitting and spinning. And this week I'm going to have some crocheting, actually quite a bit of crocheting to share with you. I'm really hoping the sound is okay because last episode I had a malfunction with my microphone. And honestly, that microphone has given me problems from the very start. Um, interference from my cell phone. I always had to keep my cell phone like across the room. Um, but last episode, I have no idea what happens because it happened. When I always do a sound check, and whenever I did my sound check in the beginning, it sounded perfectly fine. But somewhere in the middle of the episode, it just had a lot of interference, and then it cleared up towards the end again. But it was probably really annoying to listen to. Um, but by the time I realized it, it was like, no, I am not refilming this. I've said this before, I really enjoy podcasting, but it is, it's, it takes up a lot of time. So um, when I had sat down to edit it and realized that there was that interference, I thought, I thought oh man. But like at that point in time, I had, a, I need to move, I needed to move on with my life. I feel like I'm talking fast today because it's been a month since I filmed last and um, every week I've thought I need to film an episode. Um, I want to film an episode, but we've been really busy with finishing up our school year. We have about three weeks left um, of school. So because of that, we have evaluations and stuff. My kids have to be evaluated every year. Um, and I have to turn in a portfolio of their work. So I've been trying to get that done and um, just I feel like there's just been a lot more distracting me um, we're get, I'm one of the coordinators for our church's Bible school so we've been I've been focused on that I've, I've just been focused on a couple other ministry things there's just been a lot going on so I haven't even been knitting as much and when I do have free time I I don't know I just feel like my my brain is distracted. But I thought, it's sunny out this morning. It's still pretty early. It's only 9.30 in the morning. Um, my daughter woke up not feeling well. I told her to go back to bed for a little bit before we start her schoolwork. So I have a little bit of time. So I'm, I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and film this. Another reason I wanted to film today is because I wanted to get an episode in before this weekend. This weekend, I am going to Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I'm really excited. It's my first time there. My husband surprised me. It was supposed to be a big surprise, but I kind of ruined it. Um, I don't know. Last month, he had started planning this trip for him and I, and was looking into hotels in that area. I think it's West Friendship, Maryland, is where the the fairgrounds are. So, um, but what happened was, I got into Ravelry, and one of my podcast viewers who lives locally suggested a fiber festival that's in Washington County, which is about an hour, maybe a little little over an hour drive from me. So um, it happened to be, I don't think it was the same weekend as Maryland. Well, anyway, I, I took a screenshot of it and I sent it to my husband and said, will you take me to this? And he ended up saying, you know, I was planning on taking to Maryland Sheep and Wool, but then you sent me this, so now I don't know. Do you want to go to this one more? And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, I totally want to go to Maryland Sheep and Wool. I um, just didn't think it was a possibility. The one in Washington County, it looked nice, but it's, um, it's pretty small. Not that there's anything wrong with small. There's not. But it's just that I had heard, I had been hearing so many good things about Maryland Sheep and Wool. And um, when he said about, because I think I had mentioned something to him at some point in the past six months about wanting to go there, and he remembered that. He's really good with that. He's pretty awesome with uh, remembering things that I say, but like things that I want to do or things that I like. He's a great gift giver. He, anyway, I digress. But yeah, so we're going there this weekend, so I wanted to get an episode filmed before that. So the plan for this weekend is for us to leave Friday after work. It's uh, about a three and a half, four hour drive for us to where we're staying in Frederick, Maryland, which is probably 35 minutes from the fairgrounds. But um, yeah, we're going to stay there at a hotel and we're going to go to Maryland Sheep and Wool on Saturday. 
is anyone going? I mean, I know a few people are going. I know p lots of people are going, but are any of my viewers going? They're having a podcaster meetup at 1.30, I think outside the 4-H building. I don't know where that is because I've never been there before. But um, I'm going to try to go over there. The girls, Leanne and Liz, from the Cocktail, Cocktail Hour at the Coop, which I just have to say I love their podcast. I just recently started watching it, and they are so much fun. Like, they're a really fun um, podcast to watch. But anyway, they are kind of organizing this meetup, so I'm going to really try to be there, even though it feels weird to me because... I, I don't know, it just it's not something I would normally do, but I'm going to try to go. I'm planning on going, let me put it that way. Um, and I know that Colleen from Little Lionhead Knits is going to be at Maryland Sheep and Wool, and she's going with Morgan from Shopping Knitting Nellie, I think is her Instagram name. So I know those gals are going to be there. Um... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited. I spent some time this past week looking through every single vendor on the vendor list because I want to go with somewhat of a plan so I'm not completely overwhelmed. And what I'm really looking for is uh, like more rustic, sheepy wool. So uh, on Maryland Sheep and Wool's website, they have vendors. Most of them have links to their website, so I just, that's what I did. I went through each one, and I just kind of got a feel for what all the vendors carried. So I have a list of like 15 vendors that I absolutely want to visit, and I don't really need yarn. I think a lot of you know, if you're not new to my podcast, you know that, um, oh, and welcome, by the way, everyone, welcome to returning viewers and to new viewers. Thank you so much for being here. But if you have been watching this for, I don't know, at least like five months now, I've been on a yarn diet. So I've been knitting from my stash. I have recently broke that diet, that fast. I've broken the fast. Um, not like in a crazy way. I just have made a couple purchases. But I still have a lot of yarn I want to work through, and I don't really, do we ever really need yarn? Most of us probably don't, uh, but I do need some fiber. I don't really even need fiber. I would like to add some fiber into my stash, my fiber stash, because I spun through a lot of it this winter, and I have a carter, that a drum carter, and I want to be able to mix some bats up this summer. So I'd like to get some uh, fiber to be able to play around with using my drum carter. So that is basically what I did this past week as far as preparation for Maryland Sheep and Wool. I just kind of got a feel for which vendors I absolutely wanted to see. And I'm sure I will find other ones that um, as I just browse. But I don't know. I he I've heard it's going to be really busy. So, And I'm going on Saturday, which is probably going to be the, the busiest day. Anyway, we'll see. It's my first time to an official fiber festival. I've attended Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festival here in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is about 45 miles from where I live. And that's a much smaller scale, and it's, um, it's more like indie dyed yarns and not so much like the fiber. There were some people there that were selling fiber, but it's mostly like the actual skeins of yarn. So I'm really looking forward to looking at the fiber that's available and the rustic wool yarn that um, some of these farm vendors. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the um, format I usually follow, which is I'm going to talk about my finished objects, my works in progress. I have plans for some future knits. Uh, like near future knits that I want to talk about. And I also, I'm, oh, I'm going to show you the two purchases that I made uh, recently that broke my yarn fast. So why don't we go ahead. Now my finished object actually is a crochet project. And I'm going to put a picture of this humongous granny stripe blanket in because this fits my queen size bed. So there's no way I'm going to fit this entire thing in the frame of this camera sitting here. 
but this was done using the recipe from Addict24's website and I say recipe because I don't feel like it was I can't remember it really being a pattern but more of a this is how you do it kind of a thing and then you kind of adapt it to the size you want and everything I did this using scrap worsted weight yarns and there's also some uh, heavier DK in here there is I don't even really remember all the different yarns I used. I think there's a lot of Lion Brand Woolies. Um, there is some Cascade 220. Kramer, there's Kramer yarn, which is a DK, but it worked okay. I, I think maybe it's a little bit of a heavier DK. Um, yeah, I think I think those are the main. I'm looking to see. I think actually that's that's what I used. So it's a combination of Kramer, DK, Cascade 220, which is a worsted, and um, Lion Brand Wool Ease. Yes. And then, so basically, I just did these granny stripes, and I was very just, I don't know, I just didn't really plan my colors, I just went. And then I did a border the whole way around with this Kramer DK and I it's it's like a half double crochet border and then I did a single crochet along the edge but this thing is huge it is so heavy I cannot let this lay on my bed though because of my dog um, our little dog Molly she's a shorty and she has this thing where she just goes nuts from time to time and she will just take her front paws and she will just start like it's like she's digging and she always does it on our bed I don't even know why she does this she's done it since she was a puppy and um, I had made this granny hexagon crochet blanket for my daughter Lily probably seven years ago and she had had it on her bed and all of a sudden it started falling apart Oh, I think I'm out of focus. Yeah, so it had started just like coming apart. And it was one of these, the hexagons, where I changed colors a lot. So there were a lot of joins, and it took a long time to weave in all the ends and all that stuff. And I am one that weaves. I do some weaving in as I go, but I also weave in with just like a needle. And I knot pretty tightly before I weave ends in because I just don't want these blankets to fall apart. So I was like, why is this falling apart? Well then we come to find that Molly would just get up there and dig at it. And she had actually broken some of the strands of yarn. So that afghan has been in a basket in my closet for years now. It needs repaired and I just haven't been able to bring myself to, to uh, repair that. So I cannot leave these kind of things out on my bed because I don't want them destroyed. So right now this just, we fold it up and put it on the back of one of our, one of our sofas and um, yeah, it's just really humongous and heavy and lovely and cozy. And I think I'll just, you know what, I'll just throw a picture in right here of it sprawled out on the bed so you can see the size of it. I am so glad to have this done because it has been a work in progress for at least two years, maybe three. I would have to go back and check in my Instagram account because I remember posting a picture on there when I had like first started working on this. And what happened was I just ran out of yarn at some point in time and I needed to order more. And then I ordered more and then it just sat there um, in my basket for a long time until I went to a women's retreat with our church and I um, one of my friends is a an avid crocheter she crochets all the time and she was working on a crochet blanket while she was there and it inspired me so I came home and I picked this back up and I finished it within like a week I just this is all I wanted to work on until I finished it so it's done I'm happy I'm really happy in how it turned out I just love I forgot how much I love making afghans because I feel like afghans are things that can be passed down through the years. Like I have 
various afghans in my house now this was a thrift store find this one behind me and i often do that if i find a crocheted or knitted afghan at a thrift store i will buy it um because i just I like to collect them. My husband's like, we have way too many blankets, but I don't think we do. And besides, it's more than just having a blanket. Like, it's just having these things that people have spent time making that end up in thrift stores. And I just feel like I appreciate that, so I'm going to buy it and bring it home. But just to be able to make these, and maybe mine will end up in a thrift store someday. I hope not. I hope my kids cherish these someday when I'm gone. But I just feel like being able to make something that is cozy and that's going to keep my family warm is just a really um it's a really enjoyable thing for me to do so this is my only finished object for this podcast because i've been working on lots of things actually way too many things with not enough time to work on them and i really want to hone in and focus and get those other projects done because I used to be a very focused monogamous monogamous knitter, knitter, um, and then I don't know, I just started, I usually have like three projects going, which before that I would focus on just usually one or two, but now I feel like I've got a lot going on, and I've got, a, I've got several that are just like waiting to be finished. They're really close, and I need to just persevere and finish them. Um, so let me put this aside, and I think I'm just going to use that as a segue into my next project, because it is also an afghan, it is a crocheted afghan, and um, it's actually moving very quickly. That was, a, some, that was something that I totally forgot about crocheting, because I started crocheting when I was like under 10, my grandma taught me. She also taught me how to knit, which just didn't stick. So I, I retaught myself how to knit when I was probably probably in my early 30s. Um, so it's been uh, maybe eight years since I started knitting. But crocheting is so much faster than knitting. So let me show you what I'm working on. I'm doing a huge granny square afghan. I don't know. There we go. Yeah, you can see that. It's growing so fast. It's just so funny how fast it goes. But anyway, oh, I love these colors. I'm having a lot of fun with this because it's not, I'm not getting bored of it because I keep switching colors. So basically what I'm doing with this is I bought a bunch of these um, mandala, Lion Brand mandala, which are like cakes with different colors, okay? Um, and, and then also there's some woolies ones, which are also, these just have some wool in them. Uh, they have like 20% wool, where the mandala ones are all acrylic. So all I'm doing is I'm pulling yarns, colors from these. If my original intention was just to take a whole cake and crochet it just the whole way through to the end of the skein and then start another skein. And then I realized that I, w I didn't like how the colors were turning out. So I ripped it out and I started over. And now I'm just, I'm using four skeins of that. And I'm just picking colors as I go. And so sometimes that means that I roll the color off into a little ball. If I don't want to use that color and I put it to the side and I'll use it later. So these ones, oh, you're probably going to ask, and I probably am not going to be able to tell you. The colors that I'm using for this particular blanket are Chimera, Wizard, oh boy, let me see, I probably threw the other bands away because I'm so good at that, Griffin, and there's one more which I don't know the name of, so I will put that down below with all the other podcast information I just put down in the description box right here on YouTube. And I usually provide links so you can just click right through. I won't with this. Um, I bought all this at, you can get this at various places, but we, the Walmart that I live next to has, uh, has a lot of different colors. So I just bought mine at Walmart. 
So yes, I am really enjoying this project. I feel like this would be really fun to knit these as gifts for friends or even for our prayer shawl ministry at church. Um, we also do some baby blankets and we'll do lap blankets for like elderly people at nursing homes and stuff. So this, I feel like this would be a fun project to have some of these to turn in for our um, prayer shawl ministry as well. So yes, I'm highly enjoying this. I don't, I'm not going to make this one as big as I made the granny stripe. Um, I'm still going to make it big enough that it's extra cuddly. Just, I don't know. I'm just going to keep going until I decide it's big enough. So yes, that is my first whip, and it's a crochet whip, which it's been so long. Like I said, it's been so long that I, since I've crocheted. Okay, so now I'm going to just show you my knitting whips. Um, I only have, I have three that I'm going to show you. Yum, that's peach tea, and it is really good. I love peach tea. Okay, so the first one is over half finished. I'm almost finished with it completely. This was a test knit that I've been working on for Bex of the Little Home Designs. I'm not sure when this pattern is going to be released. I think it's going to be a little while yet. But um, this is her Togetherness Socks pattern. It's a cabled sock, and I'm knitting it in the Woolly Mammoth Fiber Co., yarn. Um, here's her beautiful tag. I love her uh, logo. Oh gosh. Me and... Sorry guys. You know, you get what you get with me. Okay, this is her natural sock base. So it's 50% BFL, 50% Cheviot, and it is um, Damson lot number one is the color and I purchased this last year so I'm not sure that she even has this colorway anymore but this is the finished one so this is the first one I had to have at least one sock done by April 10th which I have one sock done um, but then I have almost the other sock completely finished I have one more round of cabling to go before I start my decrease before I start the toe and then this one will be done this is really, it's a really nice pattern. I love cables. I am a sucker for cables, for sure. It's just, uh, cables are so classic. I think that's why I like them. And I used to be really intimidated by cable knitting until I did it, and I'm like, why was I so intimidated by that? That's not, it's not hard at all. It's just a little more time consuming because it's an extra step. However, Bex designed this cable so that you don't have to use a cable needle. You just, she tells you how to do it so that you can just do the cable with using your regular needle and um, not have to worry about having a cable needle. So that's really nice because you don't have to like, you know, get your cable needle out and everything. But um, as usual, I am knitting them on my nine inch circulars, which is my favorite way to knit socks. And I use a size one for, um, for my socks, for my feet. And these are going to be for me because this is a non superwash yarn so I would not make these as a gift for somebody. When I make socks as gifts I always make sure that I make them in superwash yarn because not everybody wants to hand wash their their socks. <laughs> I don't mind. I just I that's basically all I wear, hand knit socks. So I just make a pile and when the pile's big enough I will take them and I'll wash them. Um, but I know not everybody's into that and that's perfectly fine. And that's why it's nice to have all these different yarn varieties available to us because, um, yeah, for gift knitting, it's really nice to have options that are not going to shrink if you throw them in the washer. Um, so those socks are the Togetherness Socks by Bex of the Little Home Designs. I did message her to see if she knew um, when she was going to have a release date, and she wasn't sure about that yet. So when I find out, I will let you guys know, probably on Instagram. And then my next knit in progress, now let me grab it here. So you've heard me talk about Rachel from September Knits. 
because I did a test knit two episodes ago, I think it was, I test knit um, her hat, a hat for her. And she gave me, she compensated my test knitting with a pattern of my choice from her, from her patterns. And I chose this sweater called the Hyla. And it has four cables that run down the front. And again, I love cables. So um, she's actually doing a knit along. And I shared, if you go back to my last podcast, she offered a coupon code for a very deep discount on this particular pattern. And this knit along is running until, I think it's, is it the beginning of June or the end of June? I think it's the end of June. So go back and check that out. But I am knitting. So I started this. We went to South Carolina at the end of March. And I started it on the way down in the car. And um, I'm using... Well, let me show you what I have so far. So this is what I have so far. And this is Knit Picks City Tweed DK. in the plum wine colorway. Take it back a little bit. Honestly, I don't think, I mean, okay, so this is garter stitch. So I know when I block this, it's really gonna stretch. Um, which means I may block, I may keep knitting, like I definitely need to knit some more. I, this is so hard to show. It's like right under my rib cage right now. That's where it stops. So I'm definitely going to have to knit some more length into it, but I also want to be aware and remember that because it's garter stitch, it's going to stretch out lengthwise when I block it. So I don't want to knit it too long. Um, I'm knitting the smallest size. I forget what it calls for ease. Five to eight inches of positive ease. I don't like a lot of positive ease in my sweaters. I also don't like clingy fitted sweaters. I like to go somewhere in between and I felt like eight was definitely too much ease for me. Five maybe. I like I usually like around four, three or four inches. I don't know. Five would probably be fine, but I'm. This is gonna work for me. So this is where I'm at. This is a really uh, nice knit. It's it's easy. It's um. You know, again, the cables are nothing to get stressed out about. I'm. My only concern is because this is a tweed. I'm hoping it doesn't take away from the cable pattern. I think I'm hoping it's not too busy because there's the tweed. And then there's the garter, the garter stitch fabric. So I'm hoping it's not going to be too busy to look at, but I think we're going to be good. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, I've never used this yarn before, and it picks City Tweed DK. It's really, really soft, so I hope it holds up. Like, I hope it doesn't get too pilly, because, you know, sometimes those softer yarns do get... Hilly. I don't think this is super wash. No, it's no, it's not. So this, so this particular yarn is 55% merino, 25% alpaca, 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 and 20% Donegal tweed. Yeah. Anyway, I really like this color. I bought this this yarn two years ago um, using a gift card that I had received for Knit Picks and when I bought this they sold it in a as a value pack and I think it came with either 10 or 12 skeins of the same yarn unfortunately they don't appear to have those value packs anymore now it looks like all their value packs have like a variety of colors like maybe the same type of yarn but a variety of colors in it and that's really disappointing because I thought man it would be really nice to just be able to buy a value pack of one color if you want to make a sweater because it's definitely more reasonable to buy a value pack than it is to buy them as single skeins. 
So, yes, yeah, so that's my second knit whip. Oh, it's still squishy. I love that. So squishy. And then my last thing I showed you on my last podcast, this is a shawl I'm doing for our prayer shawl ministry. And this is using that Woolies yarn that I was uh, making my blanket out of. It's This is the Zeus colorway. And I'll show you here. I'm just making, I don't, I don't have a pattern. I'm just kind of, here we go. That is, that looks so bright. <laughs> it is pretty bright. Um, I am just making a triangular shawl. I'm putting some garter ridges in. I'm not even really counting rows in between. I'm just eyeballing them. And I will just continue knitting until I run out of the skein of yarn. So yes, this is for our prayer shawl ministry. So this is one of those things that I try to work on. It's an easy knit, but I try to do it when I'm not very when I'm not real distracted because like the whole reason that we're doing these these shawls for the prayer shawl ministry is to pray for the person that's going to be receiving them and even though most of the time I don't know who's going to be receiving them it doesn't matter because God knows who's going to be receiving them so I just you know do a general prayer um, but yeah so that is that's my third work in progress and I do have a couple other ones like I'm still working on my cowl that I don't remember the name of right now that has the drawstring and then I'm going to attach the little le leather tabs that Rhonda's son sent me from his Etsy shop. I still have that that I need to finish. Um, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the only other knit. Hmm. I thought I had more than that. Well, maybe not. Okay, so now I'm going to pause this for a minute so I can take a quick drink of my tea, and then I'm going to talk about my future knitting projects. Okay, um, before I show you my future projects, I want to show you one more thing that I did. So I have done some natural dyeing in the past, both of yarn and of fiber. And I've dyed with black beans and avocados and black walnuts. Well, I... Um, decided I wanted to try dyeing with Kool-Aid just for something fun to do and so I picked up some packages of Kool-Aid last week and then one evening last week I just looked up some videos on YouTube I'll link I used two and I will link those below um, and if you in case you're interested but anyway this is what I came up with I Somebody asked me, I posted a picture of these on Instagram yesterday, and someone asked me what colors I used, and that I don't remember. I, um, yeah, I don't remember. I'm sorry, guys, but I used various packets just to play around, but let me see if I can zoom in. So... I, um, it's, it's mostly like a pink base, but there is some of the natural color underneath it. And, um, then I just speckled it with yellow, green, blue, and purple. Yes. So that was fun. And I will definitely do that again. I don't know what the color fastness is of Kool-Aid, but I don't know. I mean, even if it fades a little bit, that'll be fine because it, it'll still look pretty. So I want to order some bear yarn. I know Knit Picks sells bear yarn, but I'm wondering if any of you who watch, um, if any of you dye yarn, where do you get your bear yarn? Um, I'd prefer like just a wool yarn a little maybe a wool with nylon so I can dye some sock yarn that'd be fine as well let me know though if any of you do dye yarn where do you buy your your bear yarn so that was fun that was really fun all right so future projects um, 
I have this yarn. So one of the very first indie dyers, I think the very first indie dyer I ever bought off of was Lichen and Lace. I bought her pressed, I think it was pressed flowers colorway and I made a pair of socks. But I think then the next indie dyer I bought off of was Antonella from Cozy Posy Yarn Co. I have lots of her yarn. So I have six skeins here. I have more down on my shelves of hers. I love her yarn. I love her colors that she comes up with. Two years ago, while we were in Maine, I uh, there's a lot of birch trees up there, and we were walking on this particular trail that walks or that goes through like a forest of birch trees. And I took a picture of one of the trees, like the bark on it, and I sent it to her, and I asked her if she could turn that into a colorway for me. So she did, and that was where her birch colorway came from. I think she may have revamped it just a tad bit since she originally came up with it. I could be wrong about that. Um, but here it is. Let me zoom. I'll tell you guys, I just feel like I do a horrible job when it comes to zooming. I don't know how, like people say hide your face and all that, but that doesn't work. It's, I think it's my camera. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> it's not picking up the the pinks. This is beautiful. So it's beautiful. So I decided I have been sitting on this yarn waiting for the perfect pattern. This this reminds me of our, our year in Maine that year. We go every summer but this one just really reminds me of that because you know the birch path that we were on. So I'm gonna make a no frills sweater or a no frills pullover. I'm not sure what it what it actually is called. Um, but that's what I'm going to make out of this. I have three skeins here, 438 yards a skein, so I should have enough. And um, I bought some mohair from Drops. And this is, this is like a pink color. They don't have a color name on it. It's just color 03. But I'm gonna hold because the no frills pullover calls for a skein of fingering weight and then and then the mohair. So I'm going to hold these together and I'm going to make a no frills. This is like a ballet pink. Maybe even it's a very pale pink. It almost looks a little bit lavender to me. So I have that ready to go. Um I okay, so this, this mohair was very affordable. That was part of my problem because, um, so I, I, I'm trying, I mean, I do buy more expensive yarn from indie dyers, but I have to save up for that. I don't have like a budget that allows me just to buy whatever yarn I want, whenever I want. So to knit a no frills using indie dyed yarn plus indie dyed mohair would have been too much. It would have been out of my budget. But I did find this. Uh, it was between this and Knit Picks Aloft, which is also like a mohair yarn. But I think with the Knit Picks, I didn't, they didn't really have a color that I wanted. I like this color better. So this made it affordable. This made it so that I could actually make this sweater. I thought about just knitting it without doing using the mohair but I really like that soft fluffy look of the mohair I think that's what makes that no frills pullover appealing to me so this for me was an affordable option to, to use the indie dyed yarn and to match it up with a more affordable mohair and uh, this has let me show you the tag to see how many yards it has. 230 yards in each skein. So I bought six skeins. I bought this off of I Love Knitting. I think that's the website I bought it off of. No, this says Wool Warehouse. Wool Warehouse. 
I have bought off of I Love Knitting, and they always send their yarn in these little, nice little bags. That's why I was confused. So that's going to be my No Frills pullover, which I think when I finish my Hyla sweater, I'm going to cast this on. Okay, then the next project I also want to cast on for uh, is another sweater. I posted a picture of this linen dress on Instagram the other day. And I wanted a, um, I got this at Target. I saw it hanging there. It was the very last one and it happened to be in my size and I tried it on and I loved it. But I also realized that um, I'm probably going to need a sweater to wear with it, a lightweight cardigan or um, something like, just something lightweight to have to pull on over. So I posted a picture of it and I asked for recommendations on Instagram the other day. And I got lots of good ones. In fact, even if I end up not, well, I won't be able to use all the suggestions, of course, but I think I, I saved a bunch of the suggestions to my favorites. Like Andy, is it Sutherland? I, some, somebody recommended, actually multiple people recommended her crumb cardigan pattern, which is like a cropped pattern. Um, I really like that one. One thing I did notice is her patterns are all made out of, knitted with DK or worsted weight yarn. And the yarn that I want to use to, to make this sweater is a fingering weight. Um, and it's another one of Antonella's. It's honeycomb. And I think that this will go so well with this, um, cause this is like a very dark navy woven with a natural. So I think that this is gonna, the camera is making this look way oranger than it really is. It's much more gold in person. Um, but I think that this will be really pretty, make a really pretty sweater. So it's fingering weight. So Martha, I think it was Martha, she suggested the featherweight cardigan by Hannah Fettig, which let me show you that if I can there we go so there it is and I know that this pattern has been out for a long time and I know that it was all the craze probably a year and a half two years ago now I don't even remember but as usual I'm late to the game but that's okay because I don't typically make something just because everybody else is making it I make it because I want to make it um, and now I feel like this sweater would be really practical for me um, not only to wear it with this dress, but other dresses that I have. Um, so I'm going, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to make. I'm pretty sure that's the pattern I'm going to make because I have the yarn for it. And um, I loved a lot of the other pattern suggestions, but a lot of them were a heavier weight yarn. And I do want to use what I have. I'm really focusing on, even though I've officially broken my yarn fast, I still really want to make using what I have a priority over buying new yarn for projects. So I, besides, I feel like for a lighter weight sweater, fingering weight yarn just makes sense. So Martha, thank you for the suggestion. I'm pretty certain that's the one that I'm going to cast on. And I suppose maybe I should cast on this before I cast on my no frill sweater because I want to be able to wear that, this sweater this spring and summer and it's already the end of April although it is quite chilly here um, so maybe that's what I'll do maybe I'll cast on for this next because the the no frills is gonna be a warmer sweater so I'm I doubt that I'm really gonna wear it I hope that it's not cool enough that I could wear it this summer let me put it that way so thank you guys for everyone that um, thank you for suggesting all those beautiful patterns. I, I added, like I said, I added a lot of them into my favorites on Ravelry. Okay, and now I want to show you two things that I have bought. Um, one of them was a gift from my husband, and this was actually purchased, I think, last month. So it was purchased while I was still on my yarn diet, but um, he, he, we bought it then because it was a limited edition. The whole way from Sweden. I have talked about Carolyn so many times. 
You would think I could pronounce her Instagram name by now, but I'm sorry, Carolyn. I, I, I'm horrible. I listen to you say it, and I think I'm going to remember how to pronounce that, and then I don't. So I'm just going to link her below, like I always do. I feel like I mention her more than any other maker in my podcast. Um, but I bought some fiber off of her. I forget how many ounces this is. Or grams 300 grams 500 grams I don't remember I'm also not very good with um, the metric system so what does it say oh I don't remember 0.55 kilograms it says on the customs paper basically this is definitely enough fiber to spin yarn to make a sweater for sure and this is a like a navy blue and a natural color which I am a big fan of navy um, it's got some darker like even some black in there shoot what did she call this sashiko I think was the name of this anyway this was like their colorway back in was it March I don't remember now um, but they only made, so every month they make different fibers. They, they make mixes of different fibers. And then once they're out, they're out. I think is how it goes. I saw this spun up. She spun this up and I thought, oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. I want that so I can make a sweater out of it. So I'm going to spin this. I'm not sure when. I have so many plans. I just don't have enough time to do, to like execute all those plans. But I'm going to work on this probably through the summer. And um, eventually I want to knit a sweater out of it. That's all the further I've got with planning for that. I love her fiber. Excuse me for a minute. I... My allergies are so bad right now. Which is rare because um, as a little side note, I used to have severe allergies. I had to have surgery and everything because my allergies were so bad at one point and I got so sick from it. But when I gave up dairy and gluten like 10 years ago, it cleared them up to the point where I didn't even have to take allergy medicine. But for some reason, this spring, I have had, yeah, I've had problems with allergies. So I have like this scratchy throat. And right now I feel like I might start coughing. I don't know, I think it's the maple trees when they start to bud and then we have lots of trees flowering right now. So I'm thinking that's what's going on, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure why this year. This year, my daughter, also, her asthma has been horrendous, and she went, for the past three years, it has not been a problem, and then this year, she had to go back on medicine for that and use an inhaler, which, I mean, okay, I am not a big proponent of using, like, pharmaceutical meds unless you absolutely have to. As a former RN, I definitely understand the importance of them in cer certain situations, and when my daughter comes to me and she is wheezing so bad and can hardly breathe, I know that that is a necessity then, that we have to bring in some pharmaceutical aids. Um, because, yeah, that's respiratory things. You don't want to mess around with them. Okay, and then one other purchase that I made is from Ashley from the Blackberry, Bri Blackberry Ridge. I also have a lot of her yarn. She started dyeing fiber. I've talked about this before. She had sent me two braids to test been um, before she released her her new line of dyed fibers and then I went ahead and I purchased one myself because this is gorgeous and I don't have any yellow and green fiber that I've spun ever because I'm typically not drawn to yellows but when I saw this I thought wow that's really pretty so this is um, Polworth and it's called Lemon Grove and this is a four ounce skein And I just think that is so, it just reminded me so much of spring. It's beautiful. So I'll be spinning that up soon. And I believe that is everything that I have for you guys. Um, I am curious though. I, I don't know. I want, I'd like to interact with my viewers more. First of all, thank you guys. I feel like I always say this is at the end of my podcast, but thank you for your comments. I love getting comments. 
when I get onto YouTube and I see that little bell and it's got numbers beside it and I, you know, that means that somebody has left a comment, I get so excited. And so thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Also, I was wondering how many of my viewers knit, how many crochet, and how many spin. Um, today's podcast was very eclectic as far as I had some knitting, I had some crocheting, I showed some fiber. I haven't spun anything since I last podcasted, but um, like so I do I do plan on sharing from all three things. Uh, this summer I hope to do some more natural dyeing. I have been saving and freezing some stuff and I want to plant one bed. We have um, like our garden beds. I want to plant one bed with dye material. I feel like I'm running out of time. I need to do some research on that. Again, so many ideas, so little time to execute them. So I do plan on sharing some of that natural dyeing. Also just dyeing with Kool-Aid because it's fun. I mean, it's just fun. It's fun to play with color. It's fun to make things like that and see how they turn out. So I'm just wondering, like my viewers, what do you guys do? What is your biggest craft? I feel like a lot of people that watch me knit. Do I have crocheters that watch? I know some people spin. I'm just really curious, uh, you know, because it's like me all by myself here on this side of the camera. So when you guys leave comments and stuff, I love that because I feel like I'm getting to know my viewers more. So uh, leave a comment below. And thank you. If you're new and this is your first time viewing my podcast, thank you so much for giving me a try. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like it, uh, you can subscribe below by clicking the subscribe link. And, um... Yeah, also I just wanted to say again, I've really been enjoying the cocktail hour at the cute cocktail hour at the coop girls. They're so much fun. They're sisters. And I follow them both on Instagram. I also follow their other sister, Andy, on Instagram. She's not part of their podcast on a regular basis, but so head over, I'll link below to them and um, head over if you want a fun podcast to watch. And I think, yeah, leave me some podcasts recommendations as well. Um, I have several that I watch. I just saw Fiber Tales. Lerke from Fiber Tales just posted another episode and I started watching that this morning and I got probably 15 minutes into it so I'll finish that up later but I was really excited to see her. She just had recently had a baby so I know her life has been really busy uh, with that so she hasn't had a chance to podcast until just just now. It's been a while so I was excited to see her come up in my notifications. I feel like I'm forgetting something because I did not write stuff down, which hmm, that's difficult of me. I typically don't write stuff down. So, but I think also I feel like I'm forgetting something because it's been over a month since I last filmed. And so I feel like I should have more to show than what I have. But I think I also probably showed a lot.